So today I want to cover the programming mistakes of the weak and the small. I covered in a blog post a few days ago three, um, the three biggest mistakes I see for people who are trying to gain strength. And I didn't talk specifically about programming because I wanted to cover that in another um, kind of longer post because it's a uh, bit of a bigger issue. Generally the problems I see with people's programs are twofold. Either they uh, run a program that just never worked in the first place and they just they're running it and without very much thought and the second is they run a program that worked for a certain period of time and it's run its course and now it no longer works and either they need to troubleshoot it or they need to move on to a different program. This video will cover what to do when you're running a program that's no longer working and how to either change it or transition it to make it work for you. So how can we figure out if a program is working the way it's supposed to work. I mean, this is pretty simple. If you're trying to gain strength, um, are you getting stronger? If you're trying to gain muscle, are you gaining muscle? Uh, obviously, with I'm going to be con concentrating more on the strength side of things here. So, when you run a program, generally you're running it in you know four, eight, ten, twelve week cycles. A simple way of knowing if you're progressing is are you getting stronger? If week one you're lifting 100 pounds. Well, if it's a 12-week program in week 12, are you still lifting 100 pounds or are you lifting 110 pounds, for instance? If you're still lifting the same weight, well, either the program didn't work, you got injured, or you weren't executing it properly, or whatever. But obviously, it's not working for you. How can we troubleshoot a program that we know isn't working, but let's say we want to keep that program, but we want to make a couple of changes to it to make it work for us? So a couple of the things that I see the most are going to be um, in line with what we talked about. So, you know, people um, not lifting heavy, people um, not lifting properly and getting hurt, or people not using the right exercises. So those are obviously all programming variables, but specifically in, in what we're talking about today, um, generally the thing you need to do is look at your program um, and find out what went wrong. So. Um, if you got hurt, obviously that can be that can just drastically change the course of even the best program. So you know, two people can go on the exact same program. One person does the program injury free and breaks a whole bunch of PRs on a bunch of different lifts, and someone else gets injured week one, week two, and um, that basically derails their progress for the rest of the program. So if you're injured, um, you have a lot less reason for concern. You can probably just try to work around your injuries by either using very vari exercise variations or you know let's say you hurt your shoulder well maybe you can't bench but you can still squat and you can still deadlift um, so you obviously have to try to do whatever you can for your pushing exercises or sh or pulling as in horizontal and vertical pulling and then but you can still focus on your squats you can still focus on your deadlifts you can still focus on your single leg movements to progress both the squat and the deadlift if you're not injured though, now is a time where you have to really assess the program that you're doing. Is it right for you? Um, you know, are you able to make all your sessions? Are you able to make all the lifts that the program calls for? Are you able to execute um, all the lifts that the program calls for with good form? You have to look at all these variables and you have to figure out, you know, is this program built correctly for me? Perhaps with many programs you use kind of like a, a training max. So that would be a number that you plug in and the program, you know, a percentage based program is going to be, you know, let's say week one is 70%, week two is 80%, week three is 90% and week four is 95% for instance. Um, if in the first week you can't even lift the weight you're doing that's supposed to be 70% of your one rep max, well then that's your fault because you, you're using a training max that's obviously way too high. So when you're picking your training max, make sure that it's um, a max that you've actually done, like physically done in, uh, in a period of time that's very close to right now because sometimes you get, I get clients who say, um, you know, my one rep max on the squat is 225 and then I give them a program based off of a 225 pound max and the week one they're like, yeah, um, I only got two reps and they're supposed to get 10 reps for instance. Well, I know that 225 obviously isn't their actual max so that that number needs to be drastically reduced so that they can get the proper amount of uh, reps for, 
you know, week one or week two. And then you need to look at the amount of volume a program has. Are you finding that there's too many sets? Are they finding there's too little sets? Maybe you need to increase the amount of set working sets you're doing or decrease the amount of working sets you're doing. I and mean, there's, there's so many variables, it's kind of hard to cover every single one, but you have to really, really break the program down, see what's working for you and what isn't working for you and make the changes to the program in order to make it work for you. So now let's go over um, basically transitioning to another program. So let's say you assess the whole program and there's just issues all across the board. You just don't like it. Um, I don't know, maybe it's, uh, maybe you don't like doing five sets of something. Maybe you want to do fewer sets. So maybe that means you're going to go and do a, a program that's more intensity based rather than volume based or the opposite. Maybe you don't feel like doing, um, one really, really max set where you go and you're a failure because you hurt yourself sometime in the past and you just don't like doing that. So maybe you should need, you need a, a program more based on volume. So if you're a couple weeks into a program and you don't like it, um, you know, really figure out if it's the program's fault that you aren't progressing and then you can basically transition to a new program. So just make sure when you are transitioning to a new program, this seems straightforward, but I've seen people make this mistake. If you're say six weeks into a program, you're like this program, I don't like it. Uh, I'm not making any progress. I just, I just don't like the program period. I'm not having fun and I'm here to obviously make progress, but if I'd rather make progress and have fun at the same time. So let's say, again, you finish week six. When you start the new program, you start at week one. You don't have the right to just start at week seven on a new program. So make sure you start a program in the correct time, um, i.e. week one. You start at week one. You don't get to start in a more advanced week just because you've completed a, a certain amount of time in a different um, exercise program. So now you're prepared to deal with kind of assessing a program that you don't like if you're not making any progress or if you don't like the program, um, you can obviously transition to something else and now you have the tools to kind of uh, assess a program and see what you like, what you don't like. A lot of it's gonna be individual. Um, you know, one person might like one program that's the exact same as another person and the other person just hates it because it doesn't, you know, vibe with them, whatever. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and I look forward to talking to you in the near future. Later.